All right, so, so far so good. We have our, our checkout here with the information that we need. So what we need now is to create a controller, uh, not a controller, sorry, a model that will save our data. Because if we go to the checkout controller, and this is where we are at, this is the data that we have. So. What I will do here is I want to um, to write, let's load a model here that we haven't created yet. So I'll copy this information. So this is a checkout.php controller. So let's write a model here. And this one will be the checkout model. Naming doesn't really matter. It's entirely up to you what you want to name it. So check out. So we load that model here and then, okay. Uh, but we haven't created this model yet. So we're just uh, putting it there in advance. So check out. Uh, we're going to create a method called um, maybe just check out. Yeah, check out, check out. Doesn't really matter. Mm. Or maybe just to be more specific, you can say save checkout or something like that. Okay, now what data do we need to provide here? What are we going to be using? So first of all, we would definitely need the post data. So let's put that first. And then we're going to need the rows inside the, uh, the data that we're about to save, the, the product details. And then we'll need a user ID so that we know who is actually uh, who is actually buying this stuff. Okay, so I will mute these guys for a bit, like so. So this is all we need to do here, and then we need to be able to redirect our user to the appropriate place. So at this point, I'm going to say um, header. And then let's redirect our user location. So first of all, uh, of course, we need to put the root there. And then um, where do we go? So you want to thank the, uh, the user for buying something. So you say, thank you. So we're going to create that file. Thank you there. Thank underscore you. And then die, obviously, so that we make a clean exit from there. Okay, but for now, because we are error checking, I don't want to redirect just yet. Uh, I want to create this uh, model right there. So we go to models here and we create a new file. And let's copy what we already have. It's always uh, nice to be able to just uh, copy some stuff that exists. So I'll copy all this up to this place here. Copy, that's all I need to copy there. Bracket, bracket. Then change this to the appropriate name. So I'll save it as checkout.com class.php save okay so if i come back now to this i can copy that that i've created so that i have exactly the same signature paste it remove that uh, thing there mm -hmm. so now because i don't want to use the global uh, variables i will remove the underscores so that uh, just for this one so that it's it's specific because keep in mind that the post the one with an underscore is accessible here because it's a global variable. So I don't want to use that. So I change it to that. So these variable names can be anything, of course. So, but on this one, I just want the user ID there like this. I'll just name it user ID. Okay, so we are good. It's just here. I need to say check out like so. Okay, very nice. Mm -hmm. Now, when I get here, I need to be able to see what uh, contents I have. So let me just do a uh, show and say show uh, row rows. 
just so we know we are there okay all right so back to this let me add some stuff nothing special here so we're going to put uh, all that proofreading here but uh, for now let's um let's just do this go cannot declare class checkout because the name is already in use oh on line three wait is the name already in use oh it is already in use ah my bad okay so hmm yeah it's used by the controller so this is the thing this is where we need to have you know uh what are those um domains where we change which class belongs to which domain anyway uh what we can do here is change the name for the checkout we can leave the file name because uh, it doesn't really matter but no actually it does matter because the file name and the class name must be the same so let's change it to um, let's change it to order shall we i think that makes more sense i like that let's change that to order save rename the fire itself and change that part to order uh -huh. Now we come back to the checkout here and everywhere where it says checkout, I'll say order. Same as here, order. Let me just confirm uh, it's not in use yet. Okay, so that is good. Refresh and happy trails. There we go. Okay, so goody goody there. So we do have two items now it's saying undefined index user id in uh, checkout.php okay so it can find the user id here because i am actually not logged in okay so now in the process in the event that you are not logged in for example and you want people who are not logged in to be able to buy stuff so this is where instead of using the session user ID, we're going to use the uh, actual session ID. So what I will do is let me just echo here so that you can see it. I will say echo uh, session underscore ID like that. Okay, so that you can see it. So I'll refresh, resend the data. And then at the very top there, you see now there's a very random number. That number right there is the session ID, okay? So if we go to our table over here, and let's go to orders. So inside order, we have user ID, but we can add an extra column for session ID. That way we can identify the user when the user ID is zero. So what I will do here is I'll say, let me come back here for a second. Now, let me make sure this is a session user ID that we we use. Let me go to the login. Where is the login user class? Yes. So we have sign up, we have login. And it's actually this one that we are using. User U URL. That's, that's the one. So not... Uh, user ID there. It's user, user URL. That's the one. Uh -huh. So instead of putting this one there, what I will do is I will come here and do this. First of all, I will say um, user. This time we're going to use, uh, let me just say user ID is equal to, and this time I will use the session uh wait a minute wait a minute i think there's no reason why we can just put one and not the other so what i will say is i will put user id as zero like so 
or I will use the if statement. Let me copy that. User URL. That's what we're supposed to call it here. User URL instead of user ID. So we're going to change that pretty soon. Okay, so user underscore URL. Let's do that. Let's be more specific. Is equal to zero. And then um, instead of it being equal to zero there, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll just do this session ID is equal to, and I will copy that. I'll actually cut that and put it there. Okay, good, good, good. Uh -huh. So here I will put session ID. Okay. And then here I will put user URL like this. Okay. User URL session ID. Now we can extract these guys from within the class itself here because those are global items and they can be accessed directly here. But uh, it's much cleaner when you have them coming in from here because your function becomes portable. So I would rather we do it that way, even though we can do it as a global thing. All right, so back to checkout.php. So we have that, we have that. So we've set this one and this one correctly here. But what we want to do is if it, if the session variable is set, we use that instead. So that actually rhymes. Okay, so let's come here. And I will say user URL if is set that. If that is set, let's do something else here and get user URL to match this one here. Copy and paste there. Okay, so pretty good. So we set this to zero, but if it exists, we set it to the existing version. Session ID will always exist, regardless whether you are logged in or not, this will always be there. Now, the reason we need both is just as a backup plan in case somebody is not logged in, they will have a session, a user ID of zero or user uh, URL that doesn't exist. So maybe we can just put an empty string since uh, that is supposed to be a string. And then if, they, if it does exist, then we'll put it here because, wait a minute, yeah, it's the URL address that we are getting from the user, isn't it? Yes, let me come back here for a second. Let me check users just to confirm that the URL address does indeed exist and it does. Okay, so now we need to change the structure of our table mm -hmm. to match that. So click on structure. And let's change uh, user ID, shall we? So this one, user underscore URL, change from begin to variable character. And we're going to copy what's inside user. So I will take a sneak peek at user's structure to look for the URL address. It's 60 length so that we don't waste any space at all. And I will save that. Okay. Save, 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 save. There we go. And then we will add one more for session ID. But then um, I did notice as well, we don't have the phone numbers, home phone and um, the other one, which is a mobile phone. So let's add three of these dudes here. Okay, go. So session ID. Mm -hmm. And then we go uh, home phone, and then we go mobile underscore phone, yes. So variable character and variable character there. Now, if we go here, we can clearly see that uh, there's a, a number there, okay? Now, just we can instead of counting how many uh, characters are there, we can do it the lazy way. 
and have the thing uh, show us itself. So I will go to the order class, which is showing that. Oh, where is it showing the session ID? Right here. So what I want to do is uh, echo that out. So I will say show or just echo this case string length. Uh -huh. What string are we checking for? We're checking for this session ID. So I just want to see how long that baby is. So refresh and resend. So as you can see, we don't have that error anymore, but then we have a value of 26 there. So that's the length of our session ID. So instead, oh, what's the number again? 26. So I will put it at 30 just to be uh, sure that it fits. Just in case, you never know. Phone number I think could be a length of 15 or 14, depending on the number in your area. And that's about it. So save. Go back to the structure. And let's add some indices here. Now you could select a couple of these like so and do select, select, select. And then click on index here yeah but that's not really a good idea because then the index is shared between the three unless that's actually what you want because there are times when you want the index to be uh, shared by three items so it means when you are sorting by those items it will follow all three at once but that's not what i want i want these uh, indices to be separate so i'll add them at separate times nope home and phone number do not need it's just the session id that requires an index there okay so so far so good we are looking up let me remove this string length here we don't need it no more mm -hmm. so now we just want to write the code here that actually saves the data 